We've got barbecue back here. You're all invited. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Doing pretty well. Doing pretty well. Excited to watch some uh, some college football this weekend. Maybe see some team chaos here. Yeah, doing pretty well. How are you, Jared? Doing good. Doing good. Doing good. Doing good. Um, yeah, we have uh, seven or actually six games that we're going to cover for you this week. If you want to hear our thoughts on Ohio State and Penn State, uh, listen to the Thursday episode. Know your enemy, Penn State. So, Kyle, where do you want to get started this week? All right, let us start. Oh, boy, you change you changed this formula up, Jared. <laughs> All right, uh, we will start. What I change? Of course, with, with, with our with our noon games here. Uh, we will start with Notre Dame and Syracuse. And in almost any other year, uh, this would be almost flip flopped where Syracuse would have the worst record and be unranked and Notre Dame would be ranked with a better record, but, um, not this year, Notre Dame, Notre Dame, four and three Syracuse, six and one coming off their loss to Clemson. And Syracuse at home is a two and a half point favorite. If Notre Dame wins, what does that mean for us? Gangland asks. Nothing. 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 Not 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 a damn thing. Um, the 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 idea of Notre Dame uh, still being a good win. means it that that that's gone that that done sailed mm -hmm. all right so Kyle, interesting we, stat interesting stat here um if i'm gonna go a tad bit meta with it mm -hmm. i'm gonna go a tad bit meta with it looking at these games um we've seen syracuse win convincingly um really three times um, Purdue was close. Virginia was close. Um, and then their loss to Iowa was, or excuse me, their loss to Clemson was close. I don't know where Iowa came from. Um, but maybe my favorite stat in regards to Syracuse and why I think that they will both win and cover why I think they can cover this two and a half points pretty easily is that on the year Syracuse is currently Six and one against the spread and Notre Dame as a comparison, 40, uh, four and three against the spread. Interesting. Interesting. Is that right? Uh, I no, uh, six and one, three and four, excuse me. Notre Dame's three and four against the spread. Um, I never really cared too much for what their ranks are or ratings are for if they cover or not, but it just doesn't matter to me, but either way in this, in this game Maybe here, it should. in this game here, I got, I got Syracuse covering Notre Dame offense is just a mess right now. And um, if I pull up my little cheat sheet here, uh, Syracuse's defense actually ranked pretty good. Now you can look at who they played and all that. And okay. But so even with that, there's still a, Pretty good defense statistically right now. And statistically, Notre Dame is not a good offense here. So I will I'll take Syracuse to win and cover at home. Two different methods. We both got to the same end result. We did. All right. And Austin is our guest picker for this weekend here. If you want to listen to our picks for the Ohio State game, listen to our Thursday episode where we uh, talk about Ohio State. In this game here, Notre Dame, Syracuse, he says Notre Dame has to start putting together a string of wins or Marcus Freeman might not last long. His 21 to 10 loss to Ohio State in the early season is actually not looking like a bad loss. But losses to Marshall and Stanford cannot continue. Unfortunately, I don't think this would be a great week for for the Dame at the Dome. Haha. -ha. Syracuse has been a fun little surprise this season, and they proved last week against Clemson that they'll get up for big games. 
They should have one last. They should have la- one last game, by the way. Anyways, I like the big orange to win this game. Yeah, Syracuse wins and covers in a low scoring game, 20 to 17. Sorry, the chat is being extra themselves tonight. Um, <laughs> what, what's the next game, Kyle? All right, let me scroll up here. Next game here, we have TCU and West Virginia. Yeah, TCU, West Virginia. TCU, so I, West Virginia. <laughs> I asked the chat and, uh, and I framed it like, hey, what would make for a better podcast? Should we continue to try and pick like the most competitive games of the week or should we feature the most relevant teams of the week? Um, Because in the past, I always did the former. Uh, but then I asked that I asked everyone, this is one of the other things you can get if you become a patron. You literally can help determine the future of the show. Um, or should we try and feature like so like, for example, in the past, we never would have done Florida and Georgia. And we do often. Yeah, you, that that you do. We never would have done Florida and Georgia because the spread was too high and we would just gone and done something else. But like now we're going to start, you know, favoring as we especially now that it's late October, the, the relevant teams. OK, so coming into this game, it is it is at West Virginia. TCU undefeated West Virginia three and four coming into this game and the Horned Frogs. Sorry, there's a lot of frogs happening in our chat here. Uh, the Horned Frogs are a seven and a half point favorite. What do you got, Jared? I got TCU by a mile. Um, if we, again, we go, we look at some of the past games here, right? Um, we saw them win by 10 in a game that they were favored by six and a half against Kansas State. Um, they do fail to cover in their two games against Kansas and Oklahoma State. Mm-hmm. Um, but they missed those covers by a combined two points. And every other every other cover they've they've reached. Look at West Virginia and um listen, they they lost by 38 points to Texas Tech. They lost by 30 for, forget all the spread talk. West Virginia lost by 38 points to Texas Tech. I I I feel pretty comfortable yeah, taking TCU minus seven and a half. Mm-hmm. Did you know, Jared, that Texas Tech is a top 10 offense? Y- yeah, uh, yeah, but still. <laughs> All right, here's. I, I, I got I got uh, the Horn Frogs to cover cover, but I actually think it's going to be a lot closer than people would think, like seven and a half. I, I think TCU may win this by 10 points. I think I think it's going to be actually closer than what people think it is. And 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 uh, and I'll, I'll tell you why, Jared. I'll tell okay. you why. Yeah, I don't agree with you. So you're going to need to convince me. Offensively, TCU, one of the best in the one of the best in the country. It's uh, Tennessee, Georgia, TCU, Ohio State ranking rank as uh, the best offenses in the country right now. I'm not a hater. I got them to cover. You shut your mouth, Austin. Uh, West Virginia, actually not that bad of an offense either. 38th, 38th in the country. Not, not a bad offense. Defensively, Jared. Defensively. TCU ranked 90th. 90th in the country. TC reminds me a lot like Ohio State last year. Fantastic offense, but letting up a lot of yards, a lot of points as well. Will, will, will this game catch up to them? I, I think West Virginia will make it interesting. West Virginia's defense is not that good, so this is going to be a, an old-fashioned uh, Big 12 shootout here. But I think it's going to be closer than what chat thinks here. But I... I do, I do think it would be closer, but TCU will cover. 
Yeah. Um, I don't know. I think this West Virginia team's bad. I don't. I. I think they're very. They're bad. not. A, they're not a bad offense. They're not a bad offensive team, but it. But both defenses are not that good. All right. As a comparison, West Virginia scored twenty points against Texas. Mm-hmm. Uh, TCU has not played Texas yet. Okay, hold on. I'll find a comment upon it. Um, <laughs> Oklahoma, Kansas. No. Baylor? No. You know what? We're moving forward. Anyway, I, don't think I, think T- I, just, I think TCU is a significantly Kansas. better team. Kansas, Jared. Kansas is the, is the, uh, is uh, the how, common denominator. How in the Big 12 do they only have one common opponent this deep into the season? Uh, Kansas. Yeah. The, God, the Kansas West Virginia game was 42 to 55, not in favor, by the way, of West Virginia. Um, meanwhile, TCU beat Kansas by seven points. Yeah. And 38 to 31. So again, I think this is going to be a high scoring game, but yeah, moving on to what Austin has to say about this game here. Uh, he says, uh, ribbit, ribbit, um, my horn frogs, who I have been lobbying in week in support for weeks are finally getting, getting some of the respect that they deserve. The big 12 may not be the best conference, but they are certainly too heavy, but they're certainly too heavy. And TCU has beaten most of the top teams already. They definitely aren't guaranteed to go undefeated, but I would say their only remaining huge test is against a rejuvenated Texas team since yours returned. Regardless, I like them for an easy win and cover this week. He says horns up 49 to 20 TCU. All right, moving on to the SAC, Jared. SAC? As I say, so this will be uh, the neutral field game of Florida and Georgia, which I kind of like. It's it's kind of a it's kind of a nice touch. I, I hate I hate neutral games. I hate neutral site All games right. with a white hot passion. All right, uh, Florida four and three in this coming into this game. Georgia undefeated, twenty two and a half point favored by the dogs. And you know what, Austin, Austin, who, by the way, is a UF grad, um, says they're looking to move to on campus by 2024. Okay. Good for them. Good for them. Uh, It's a rivalry game. And. Oh, I'm trying to pull up my notes. I think from what I researched here, Jared. Uh Uh-huh. There, there's definitely been some games that Georgia's kind of like, eh, are they going to come in, out and play? And they actually come out and play in the second half. Yeah. You know, they just come off of a 55 nothing victory over Vanderbilt, but that's that's Vanderbilt. Uh, but I mean, they, they struggled against Kent State. They struggled against Missouri. They struggled in the first half to Auburn. I, I think we're going to see a little bit of that, especially if... Um, if uh, Richard Richardson can get going here, I know he 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 had a he struggled against LSU, but I mean if he can really get going, uh, I like like he did against Tennessee. I I think this could be a lot closer game. Twenty two and a half is is a bit much for me, so I'll take I'll take Florida to cover, but Georgia still wins easily. I agree that Georgia is going to win easily. I, I have little doubt about that. I have pretty little doubt about that. Um, I mean, 22 and a half's a lot, though. 22 Florida and a half. Hundred, Florida is 109th ranked defensively. 109. While Georgia is the uh, ranked number two in offense, and number four in defense. Yeah, and, and like I said, it's it's a lot of points. And when it comes to Georgia, we've seen them like choke pretty hard against 
teams where they had big spreads. Um, they missed the, you know, they, they were favored by 45 points against Kent State, but only one by 17. And it was closer than that, if we're being honest. They were favored by 30 points over Missouri and only won that game by four. Now, they have turned it around uh, somewhat. Um, they slaughtered Vanderbilt. Vanderbilt's bad, but it's still an SEC team. And they still beat that spread by a lot. They won that game by 55 points. Um, against Auburn, they won that game by 32, but they were favored by 27 and a half. And like I said, we've seen them miss on several big occasions. Um, and and they should not have. I, I agree. Um, Florida, however, has also been pretty bad against the line. If, if we're taking a look at that as well. But most of theirs have been close, at least, especially since October. Um, George, Florida has been pretty good at keeping the game closer than people expected. And Georgia's had a bit of a tendency to let teams stay around longer than they probably should. 22 and a half is just a lot of points. Give me Florida. But Georgia to win. Could have stopped it. Florida's been pretty bad. That's <laughs> by the way, this right, isn't this this is an interesting against the spread stat on, on this one, Austin. Um all season, Florida is three and four against the spread. Uh but in SEC play, one and three against the spread. All right, let's see what Austin says. He says <sighs> Honestly, Georgia isn't as good as they were supposed to be this year, which it's kind of funny you say that because they're ranked number two on offense, four on defense. But either way, and, and they're also wildly inconsistent offensively. Uh, they they dropped an egg against Missouri and could have easily lost that game, if not for a last quarter spark of offense. Georgia is obviously the better team here and will be up for a rivalry game. 22 and a half is a lot to lay for a team that hasn't proven they can cover it against a team like Missouri, who Florida is at, le at the very least as good as. I also am by contract and alumni required to pick the Gators, so I'll do that, but I don't think they have much of a prayer to actually win outright. He has Georgia winning 38 to 19. All right, Kyle, who's next? All right, let me scroll up. Next game here. Got the uh, Big 12 showdown, Oklahoma State and Kansas State. Uh Oklahoma State coming in six and one, Kansas State two five and two, and the Wildcats. Oh, it's it's a pick 'em. It's a pick 'em yeah. here. I read it as Kent Kansas State is a 0. 0.5 point favorite. It, it's a pick 'em. It's a pick 'em. And if, if if you're if you're have a pick 'em here, I'm going with the better team. I'm I'm going with the Cowboys here. I I just I just like overall what I've seen from Oklahoma State so far this year. Um, that the, the defense isn't what it used to be here, what they used to be with Knowles, but I think their offense will make up for that to, um, to pull off the win. So I'll, I'll take the Cowboys here. Yeah. Um, uh, it's, as Kyle said, it's a pick, um, pick, take the better team. And, you know, I think Kansas state's better than this is a better Kansas State team than we've seen from Kansas State teams in the past, but they're not they're not Oklahoma State. Um, I really like Oklahoma State. Their only loss was three points to TCU, who I also really like. Um, they're flawed teams, but they qualify as top 10 teams by the low standard of what a top 10 team is this year. Um, so, yeah, give me Oklahoma State. Yep. Georgia might get a backdoor cover, possibly. Possibly. All right. Uh, let's see what Austin says here. Says he likes Kansas State a lot. They, have a, they they gave a very good TCU team a bit of a scare for two quarters last week. Oklahoma State, on the other hand, has had a decent job with at least keeping a fraction of the defense that Knowles had. Uh, kind of. Uh, had in place before he left for the Buckeyes. 
It's a pick them, essentially. That means I can't use sloop cast number eight, rule number eight, and just take the points when in doubt. Instead, I'm going with sloop cast rule number three, pick the quarterback. I would go Kansas State if I knew for sure Adrian Martinez was playing. True. Yeah. But he, he got hurt, and the backup looked terrible. Spencer Sanders can get it done. Oklahoma State, 55 to 48. Who's next, Kyle? All right. All right. Next game here we have is Kentucky and Tennessee. Uh, let's see. Uh, Kentucky, five and two coming in, going to on the road to Tennessee, seven and zero. Oh, and Tennessee is a 12 and a half point favorite in this game. What do you got, Jared? Um, I'm going to go, I'm going to go with Tennessee here. Uh, I think that, I think Tennessee has a really good offense. I think they have a really good passing attack. Um, I really like hooker. Um, they have, they have a real strong performance against the spread this year. Um, their only miss was, uh, beating Florida by five instead of six points. Or excuse me, beating by five instead of 11 points. Um, which, you know, sort of lends back to the Florida pick for covering, right? Literally Tennessee's only failure to cover this year. Um, but yeah, they, you know, they, they had a, basically a bye week last week playing a, playing an FCS school. Um, they obviously covered against Alabama, seeing as how they actually won that game. Um, LSU, they smashed that line. It was supposed to be like a two or three point game. And then they turn around and won that game by uh, 27 points. 24 points, rather. Um, anyway, point is, is that uh, I think, again, a flawed team. I'm like really I'm really looking forward to Georgia and Tennessee. I really want to see how that plays out. Um, but Tennessee is at least offensively speaking, a really good team this year. And I just don't think Kentucky has the horses to keep up. Give me Tennessee to win and cover. You know, to me, Jared, I think this of all the of all the games that we're picking, I think to me this was the toughest for me to pick. Yeah, and and it's it kind of sounds odd. I was like, oh, t- Tennessee should be able to win easily. Twelve and a half points. Uh, they beat they beat Alabama. I do think they win um, easily. For the yeah. record, they 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 beat Alabama a couple of weeks ago. They beat LSU. They beat Pitt in Florida. But I mean, Tennessee's defense is hot is hot garbo. Their defense is hot garbo. They are 104th on 104th in defense here. Yeah, they're 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 up there. They're they have the best offense right now. Yes, but but you you got a you got a pretty good defense in Kentucky. They're they're gonna they're gonna really limit on how many possessions Tennessee's going to have up is gonna have here. And Tennessee's very vulnerable on defense here. Uh, yes, they they did let up 24 points to um, to uh, UT Martin last week, but I mean, at almost half of those points in the fourth quarter. So I'm not going to really count that. But 49, they let up 49 to Alabama. They let up uh, 33 to Florida, uh, 27 to Pitt. So they they do let up quite a few points here. So don't be surprised. Going into the late third, fourth, it's still a pretty close game here. So I'm I'm going to give the I I still have Tennessee winning, but I I think Kentucky will barely cover here. I think I have Kentucky barely covering. That's fair. Kentucky hasn't given up twenty four plus for like mm-hmm. eighteen straight. Yeah, no, that's 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 something I I looked at too. Of all the games here, they've yeah they've only let up uh, the most they've let up is twenty four points, and that was a couple of weeks ago in their uh, in their really bad loss to uh, South Carolina. Right, it should be Austin's. noted, however, that they lost to South Carolina. They did. I know. I know, but they... I they was reemphasizing. Last, but they, 
but they lost la- or, but they won last week against Mississippi State by 10. Whoop dee. Okay. All right, moving on here. Uh he says here Austin uh as is tradition for years running, it just means more. Wow, he has Tennessee to win and cover 42 to 16. <laughs> Complete opposite of what what I was thinking here, but uh, All right, last well, uh, Gangland, he says, didn't Bama play Mississippi State last week? That was Kentucky's uh, last game because Kentucky was off last week. Yes, you're right. Yep. No, it's, well, it's just, it was, it, it was still their last game. So, yeah. All right, last game here, Jared. We have the night game. This is the Kirk Herb Street special. Sparty. Taking on their little brother, Michigan. It is at Michigan this year. Three and four, Sparty. Michigan, seven and zero. Oh. Michigan is a 21 and a half point favorite. Now, before we start, Jared, this Friday, this Friday here, I know he's been in the news a lot recently for some things he said here, but I do want to make note here of a very interesting stat. Very interesting stat. Uh, Drake. Drake is set to drop a new album on Friday. Michigan State's record in the next game played after Drake Drake project release is 10 and 0. Cool. <laughs> now now tell me the one about right, the right, groundhog. Pick, not 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 you pick Jared. <laughs> Yeah, science is a pretty. <laughs> I, Kyle, I'm it. totally thrown. What the hell are you talking about? Who did you pick? I didn't pick anybody. I said this was a stat that I was going to throw out before we pick. So now that I've laid it out there, brought the science to you, uh-huh. who do you have? <laughs> I am really struggling with whatever the hell it is you just said. Um, I'm going to take Michigan on this. Michigan State's bad. Um, I I don't know if I need to go much further than that. Um, Michigan State's bad. They're very, very they bad. Um, they lost to Ohio State by 29 points and then... You know, they beat, they turn around, they beat Wisconsin. Wisconsin's not, Wisconsin's not great. Um, but, you know, just, if you just take a look at what Michigan's done this year, absolutely slaughtered Penn State. Um, they beat Iowa by 13, which is, you know, they, they beat the spread on that at least. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's I I Michigan State's bad and Michigan's really good at bullying bad teams. That's it. That's what I got. I I got Michigan to win and cover. Uh, no, I'm not a Drake fan. Uh, I just saw that stat and I thought I was like, huh, that is really interesting. Uh, you, you and I have different definitions of interesting. Okay. Uh, do want to note here, even though like Ohio State absolutely destroyed uh, Michigan State last year, 56 to 7. Uh, Sparty did beat Michigan last year, 37 to 33, which they are on a two game winning streak versus their little brother. But I don't think that's going to happen. I think I think Michigan, they're just we we saw against Michigan State just how bad their offense or their defensive line is. And they're they're just going to struggle here. Uh, I think Michigan is just going to do what they've been doing, running the ball, and JJ's going to do his um, short passes to um, to uh, get the defense guessing. Yeah, Michigan to cover. All right, Kyle. What does Austin think is going to happen here? That was a terrible sentence. I apologize, but you know what I was saying. All right, he says here, 21 and a half feels like a lot and at the and at the same time the perfect number. This rivalry is almost always a close game, more so than ever the the game. Michigan State as an underdog has upset Michigan before, but this Michigan team is different. 
their offensive line is likely to blow Michigan State off of the ball. Sparty needs to put up some points if they want a chance to cover. There's a good shot. They can get some, but the defense needs to step up and get hands on pulling guards and climbing tackles. This was 20 and a half. I would probably take Michigan, but I'll take Sparty to get a close cover to Teton. Sparty to cover, but Michigan wins 37 to 16. There you go. And that is all of our picks, Jared. Okay, Kyle. Now, now comes the fun one. Are you ready for mm-hmm. the fun one? Yeah. What's the fun one? You gotta choose your chaos. You gotta choose the chaos. We both had we both scored big last week. We did. We did. We we picked the same game. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm picking Florida here. No, I'm not. Uh <laughs> Go big or go home. Uh, I mean, some options here that we're looking at. I mean, Notre Dame over Syracuse is a is an option here. Uh, Austin says uh, Thursday Thursday night game. So um, after this gets um, posted, Jared. So we'll uh, know Washington State Washington State over Utah. Okay, that's 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 a good one too. It's not bad. That's not bad. Uh, mm-hmm. A um, what about Nebraska and Illinois? Possibly. Nebraska Illinois is interesting. I'll give you that. Right. Um, I'm 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 trying to pick a couple here, and then I'm gonna try and talk my way through them. Okay. Um. So, but by uh, the way, for the, anyone for anyone who does not know, what we do this is the choose your chaos section of the show. Um, we have to pick an unranked team to beat a ranked team, and the higher the ranked team is ranked, uh, the more points we get. So we're incentivized, or maybe de incentivized, to say take Pittsburgh over North Carolina because North Carolina is only ranked twenty first. That's not a ton of points. Um, mm-hmm. and maybe you might be more tempted to say Florida upsets Georgia, uh, and you cannot pick a game in which both teams are ranked. Yeah. Well, here's an interesting one that I saw, uh, saw Austin post and actually got me thinking here, Cal over Oregon. I'm not look, look, a fan of Cal this year. Well, here's the thing. Cal. Yes, they are three and four, uh, all but one game. They've uh, they've lost by one score. Three of their four losses were by one score. Maybe they keep it close, but I'm, I'm not picking that one, though. Uh, hit over UNC is another good option there. Uh, I'm it's a low, not a fan. Of, it's a low score option, it, though. It is. Uh, I'm not a fan of the... I know that the... Um, they beat Notre Dame, but I mean, Notre Dame wasn't ranked, but you can look at Stanford, UCLA. I don't think that's going to happen. I think, I think for my pick, Jared, I think I'm going to go with, I think I'll go with uh, Pitt and UNC. I know it's not many points, but I'll go with Pitt over UNC. Okay. I'm trying to over uh, Arizona over USC is one to watch. I, I thought about that one. I'm going to swing. Not that good. <laughs> no, they're not. Yeah, I, I said I thought about it. I didn't say I thought hard. Um, I'm going to swing for the fences here. I think uh, if you looked at Twitter last week, then you may have noticed that uh, Jared never thinks hard. Yeah, yeah that's not true. Um, <laughs> I wish that were a little more true. Last week on Twitter, one of the common searches was Jimbo Fisher buyout. Um, Jimbo Fisher buyout was one of the top Twitter searches last week. A lot of drama, a lot of rumors, a lot of, a lot of stuff circling, circling the Texas A&M program. Um, The, the guys will respond one of two ways. 
They will either take all of that outside noise and use it to cocoon themselves, to focus, to, you know, get 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 singularly minded and and maybe go pull up an op, uh, pull off an upset over Ole Miss, who at 15, I think, is overrated. Um, they they got run off the field last week. Um against an LSU team that was not ranked. So, hey, and by the way, this was Kyle and I's big score last week. Mm-hmm. So you know what? I, I got some points off of Ole Miss last week. I'm going to get some more points off of Ole Miss this week. So uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take Texas A&M over Ole Miss. What is the Fisher price? I, li- I, like, I like that. I, that. That is quality pun work, Gangland. I appreciate that. He's gone after early signing day. Yeah, wouldn't that be a, a shitty thing to do? Yeah. Hey, it Jared, happens all is, of the time everywhere. That is our um, our sloop picks here. Covered six games here. Uh, talked about some maybe some other upsets that could happen here. Um, but yeah, it should be, I think it should be a, a fun weekend. The Cal Oregon game is still very interesting to me. I think it less likely of hitting, but it is considerably yeah. more points. So that's just sort of where my head was at, trying to decide between those two. <laughs> All right. My pick is Sparty over. Oh boy, that's hey man, it's worth a lot of points. It's worth a lot of points. I'll 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 say that. All right. Um that uh thank me later. Take care. What what on earth is this? Is what is is the stat that I mentioned it before? Uh, yeah, but I can't even. I don't even know how to read this. I don't know what I'm saying. Um, Drake albums. Oh, you you can tell how much of a shit I give about. <laughs> I I don't know any of the album names either. It's just it's just a stat. It's it's science. <laughs> Just end the show. <laughs> Why? I I'm gonna I will I will wear my and by the way, I don't even dislike Drake. I just don't give a shit. <laughs> you missed another pun there. Um Okay. I yeah, I see you're you're correct. I missed it. Roll up to it, Kyle. Put, you know what? No, we're done. We're ending the show. All right. <laughs> uh, that's it. That's the end of the show. I want to encourage everyone to join our Discord server because why would you not want to completely derail the show like these hooligans do every week? I guess, they, Kyle, I think they're back on your team now. Uh <laughs> They're back on your team now. I guess I offended them because I don't know Drake. Um, the And that's absolutely why, and I'm not mischaracterizing it, and you can't uh, say otherwise. All right, end of the show. Um, join the Discord server, join these hooligans, and um, visit our Patreon. We're trying to get... If you've been... Guys, if you've been thinking about it, if, if it's a thing you've maybe been teetering on doing, it just just take that plunge for us. Again, it's as little as three dollars a month, and you, you, there's a whole community in the Discord server. These guys, like we, Kyle and I, have a rapport back and forth with all of the the people here for a reason. They're they're fun people, they're good people, um, and we do this all week in the Discord server. It's a lot of fun. You should you should come join. Um, Kyle, do you have anything in Kyle's corner? Um. Not really. I think one thing we didn't mention in the Ohio State game, um, definitely, I don't think it would be an issue for this this weekend, but definitely something to keep an eye out for. Uh, Ohio State down another running back here. Yeah. Uh, it's definitely a concern now with uh, with Caffey being down. Uh, Trainum is coming back to be um, taking more of um, running back roles here, so definitely something to keep an eye out for 
yeah, he's the fourth string, but you know, on a team in which you've already lost the original third string, and then you're now losing who is now the fourth string. And also you've had both the first and second string miss some games. Yeah, definitely something to keep an eye out for. Yeah, it's something it's definitely something to keep an eye out. Luckily, they have three former college running backs on the on the roster playing other positions currently, two linebackers and a wide receiver. Um, so they can maybe pull from their reserves a tad. Um, was that, is that it for cost corner? That's it, Jared. All right. That's the end of the show. Uh, tonight's ending music will be brought to you by the new bomb Turks. New bomb Turks are a Columbus slash Ohio state based band, um, from the early nineties. They're a punk band. Stick around. A lot of fun. So with all that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen, to local music, of course, support your local podcasters. Once again, once again, this is the new bomb Turks.